The last topic that we covered was vectors, in particular vector addition. So vector quantities differ from scalar quantities in that a scalar is defined by its magnitude only. A couple examples of those, distance, speed, temperature, whereas a vector quantity needs to have magnitude and direction to completely define. So position, speed, excuse me, position, velocity, acceleration, and force are examples of vector quantities. So we want to add two vectors together. For example, we look at where is point B located relative to A and where is C relative to B. So to find the um, position of C relative to A, we add those two vectors, which is the same as drawing that straight line from A to C. So to solve vector uh, equations graphically, we need to remember the law of sines and the law of cosines. So for the law of cosines, just remember that uh, you look at the, um, well, if, if you start out with the Pythagorean theorem, you would say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. However, if the opposite, of si opposite angle to side c is not a right angle, you have to add this term minus 2ab times the cosine of c. The law of sines just says that the sine of an angle over its opposite side is, uh, is the same for all three sides and angles of a triangle. So if we looked at the example problem here, putting in what we know, we see that we know one of the interior angles and we know the adjacent two sides. So we don't know an angle and its opposite side, so we can't use the law of sine. So we have to use the law of cosines to start out with here. And so we set that up with the equation for AC squared based on the other two sides, 4 and 6, and the opposite angle, which is 120 degrees. So setting that up, we can solve for AC. Once we know AC, we can find this angle alpha from the law of sines. And once we know alpha, we can add that to 30 degrees to find the angle of vector AC relative to the x-axis. And always remember that when we show an angle, we always want to have to refer it to some datum. In this case, again, it's going to be counterclockwise from the x-axis. So if we have a, a vector equation, a plus b equals r, we place those vectors tip to tail. So in other words, we move b so that it begins at the tip of vector a. And uh, again, we can switch the order of those because when we add two vectors together, uh, that is commutative. We draw the vector r, which is the resultant or sum from the beginning of the a to the tip of b, and then solve for those unknowns. SolidWorks is a good tool for this as well because we can do it graphically. And by the way, we can solve for any two unknowns with that vector equation, assuming the, these are two-dimensional vectors. Two magnitudes, two angles, or a magnitude and an angle. If we know a and b, then what we're doing is solving for the magnitude and the angle of the resultant vector r. Now, components tends to be a better way to add vectors. Um, so again, we're going to add vector a and vector b. So the resultant of that is going to be the vector r shown here. Notice we just moved b so that it begins at the tip of a, and then we've drawn the uh, resultant vector from the tail of a to the tip of b. Now, if we break the both a and b into components in the x and y directions, <coughs> excuse me, and you can see that ax plus ay vector sum would be equal to a, bx plus by is equal to b. But now if we look at the resultant vector, and we can see here that the resultant rx is going to be just ax plus bx, and the resultant uh, component ry is going to be ay plus by. So that becomes a, a way to add vectors together. Break the vectors into the components, and then just add the components. And again, easier to do than graphical uh, analytical method of placing them tip to tail. So one of the things, we don't have to use the law of sines and cosines here because x and y axes are perpendicular. So we only have to use right triangle geometry to find the components. And of course you can use more than two vectors as well. So here's an example. There's A and B. 
They're defined by the uh, magnitudes and angles that are shown here. And so we just break them up into their x and y components using the sines and cosines of the given angles. Then what we'll do will be to add ax and bx together and then add ay and by together. And those become the components of our resultant vector. So once we have those, we take the square root of the sum of the squares to get the magnitude. And then it helps to draw the directions of these and calculate the angle based on the uh, arc tangent, in this case, of the y component over the x component. And again, when we report it, we want to round it off to three significant digits for the magnitude. And when we show that angle, in this case, we're measuring it from the negative y directions. And uh, so we wanted to show that uh, as part of the solution. So to summarize, when we add vectors with components, that's usually the best way to do it, especially if you're working uh, with more than two vectors. And uh, I know in, in uh, statics, you have to work a lot in three-dimensional space as well. Now, <laughs> we haven't shown it on the uh, review here, but they're pretty easy to add vectors in Excel as well. And you can use Goal Seeker Solver when you have unknown magnitudes or angles in the vectors that you're going to add. So you can kind of work any variation of vector problems very easily in Excel. We showed an example in MATLAB, but uh, we find that's really not as not as straightforward, a little more complicated. So Excel tends to be your better tool uh, when working with vector addition.